Welcome to Brightly, you radiant being, the show that wildly recognizes, encourages, and invests in the radiance we all carry so you can shine your brightest. Each episode, we share soul-driven advice and topics to help you live more brightly in mind, body, and spirit. Through sharing our experiences, friendship, and passions, we hope to impact you to step more brightly into yourself, inch by inch. Hello there, Tracy. Hi, Amy. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Um, I, I never do this. I never see myself on the camera. I usually have it so tiny that I only see you and not myself. And so while you were talking, I was just like listening, but in the corner of my eye, I could see my hair was like sticking out. So then I had to be like, (laughs) oh, fix your hair, Amy. Anyways, I was like, all I do is stare at you when we do these. And I never notice when your hair is sticking up. I was going to say with, you have a new background. Usually you have like your office is very much all of your hobbies, all of your interests, very, so much personality, so much going on. I really love it. Um, cause I just have like, I'm backlit in mine. There's a window behind me, but today you have just a blank white wall. And I feel like I you're about to like audition for a movie or a play. Like this is like, you're about to record your monologue. I would like to do that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're getting a step replaced. And in fact, my son and his coworker, colleague, friend, they're doing it. And so it was very noisy where I typically do it. So I went into his old room, Nathan's, <laughs> which is very bare on this side because it's his old room from, you know, when he was a teenager. And I can close the door and I'm the farthest away that I can be from the front. So that's why I'm here. But I feel like this could be soothing for people if they're watching instead of that that's usually going on. I mean, I love both, but I love a good white space. When I used to work with graphic designers, it'd be like, Tracy, this is too much white space. And I'd be like, no, give me more. And they're like, it doesn't sell. And be like, give me more. Because <laughs> I think it is like the calming nature of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a blank canvas. People look at more neutral. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh. So what's going on? Well, I was going to be like, uh, I was going to start. This is, do you feel lucky punk? Um, but <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know if we do. So do you just want to dive into that? I mean, the topic's not a secret. They clearly saw the title. <laughs> I really didn't have a good Clint Eastwood impression. That's who said it, right? Like I should have practiced today. I should have looked <laughs> I don't think we could, I mean, do you need the rights to it, to use it? Maybe I'll just insert it in. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. Uh, Let's yeah. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. I just, I wanted to talk to you. I, somebody recently said something about luck, which I'll get into later, but I wanted to talk to you and see like, what do you think luck is? Like, how would you define luck? What would you think it is? This is what is luck? Okay. It's so interesting that you're asking me that because I was wondering, like, I didn't read any of the show notes for this today, just going in, have no idea what the show notes are, but I thought, let me just, I just want to look up luck to see what other people say about it. But before that, I think I would have said luck is being in the right place at the right time with the right Mm -hmm. people, something like that. But I loved one of the first things that came up was this article from Inc. And I Just want to, I just want to read you this quote. So the author is Terrence Maury and they say, luck isn't just chance, but an alchemy of courage, focus, and a willingness to experiment. And I love that because it takes it out of like, it gives you the, the, the reins, so to speak. Whereas instead of just like being in the right place at the right time and who knows where that is and when it is, right? Yeah. Well, and that's actually what inspired this conversation um, was there's a, a creator uh, that I follow online and that I used to know in real life who recently, you know, sometime in the past month or so, um, as part of like her like stream of consciousness um, kind of like stories on one of the social medias was like, luck isn't chance. And I love that. And it resonated with me. But when you look up the definition of luck, mm-hmm. almost all of them include chance. Yes. The, the dictionary um, definition, yes. right? They do. They do. So some of them that I kind of looked up though, that I liked, um, one referred to it as a phenomenon. Ooh, I like that. I like that word. <laughs> yeah. um, another kind of started it. I mean, it still kind of talked about chance, um, but it was about a force. 
Um, and so that to me is kind of greater than energy, right? Like there's like a little bit more too. intention that it's a force. But I feel like within that force or that energy, you could possibly direct it. Like you could possibly be doing things to direct it. Well, and that's just it. When it comes to luck, there's either good fortune or adversity, right? Like it's either good luck or oh. bad luck in our society typically. Yeah. Um, and that kind of led me down the rabbit hole of then, you know, is luck a synonym of or related to some of the other things we've talked about, like fate, fortune, serendipity, or karma? Like, is there any relation or are they each kind of their own phenomenon? <laughs> wow. That is, I, that is a good question that I do not have an answer for, but I'd be willing to just talk about it anyways. What do you think? Do you see them as, I, I sort of see them as maybe like first cousin once removed or something like that, but mm -hmm. So maybe there's a relationship or it's like a Venn diagram where it's like this, this, and in the middle is luck or something that ties yeah. it all together. It, to me, I think there's a, uh, there are relationships or an interconnectedness between them. Yeah. Um, but so, so many of these words are, are associated with experiences and feelings and even mythologies and personal beliefs and practices mm -hmm. that I think it's, they're both intertwined and completely separate depending on the situation. Um, or I, how I mean, you were raised maybe. Yeah. I mean, one, one of the definitions I came across that I really liked was when the outcome of a chance event is favorable to the individual under consideration. And I didn't like it because of the chance portion, but because when we think of luck versus um, like karma or serendipity, it's it's more focused on the outcome of it than the event itself. And then it's such an individualized interpretation of what happened or it's an experiential thing. Whereas I feel like karma, like the public could look at something and be like, oh, that guy got the karma he deserved, right? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't matter how he experienced it or if he even thought it was bad or not. I also um, feel like when you bring up serendipity, that that is the event and not the outcome. I yeah. Feel, yeah. I like that, that differentiating between the event and the outcome. And also you saying like, here's karma. Somebody can say, just view it and go, oh yeah, I can right? see that. Whereas somebody else may think that they had a really lucky or unlucky day and somebody outside of it could be like, oh, that's not so bad. Like you just got to do this and you're fine. You, right. Like they wouldn't attach luck to it, but the person experiencing it may have had such like a string of those similar outcomes that they just feel like they're marinating in their own. Yeah. Bad luck. Yeah. Um, Sometimes too, I go down, sorry, I go down a rabbit hole of like, do we always know when we're lucky? Like maybe it's one of those things where you're like, I'm going to go this way instead of that way. And it wasn't like huge news or anything, but you would have gotten into a car accident going the other way, but you have no idea yeah. that you were I lucky. I feel like if you're not in tune with your own luck, whether good or bad, if you don't pay attention to it, if it's not important to you, that luck becomes more reflective. Whereas I feel like fate in the moment, it feels oh. faded. It feels earned. Yeah. Um, it feels like it was meant to be, whereas luck is more, again, the outcome based, but like the kind of like looking at what happened and then assigning meaning, um, versus kind of experiencing the meaning in the moment. Um, yeah, but then, so Oh, go Oh, I was just going to say too, it feels like luck is short term and not long, like you don't mm. look at the, you know, so sometimes you might go, oh, that was really lucky that I won this $200. And then the next day or three weeks later, something happens because you won that. You know what I mean? So you, you're just like this instant feels lucky, but, but maybe luck is more of a long so, game. Do you, yeah. Do you believe that some people are luckier than others? It feels as if people are luckier than others, but I think that that has a lot to do with perseverance it, and working hard in a way. I don't know. I'm not sure. Do you feel lucky? I was wondering, it, I was actually think, wondering if you were going to ask me that question. And so I did think about it today and I don't know that I feel lucky or unlucky. I, I mean, I think 
like not to get, go down another rabbit hole. I'm certainly privileged. So does that mean I'm lucky or is that society, right? So there's that sort of layer. Um, but I used to think that I was super lucky because I would play pull tabs and I would win a lot. <laughs> and I won more than I paid out, right? Mm -hmm. So that felt lucky. And but also if we go back to chance, which I know I just said, you know, it's not just chance. It seems like yeah. it's a little greater than that. Um, but the lottery tends to see repeat winners because once you win, you tend to play more because you see it as a possibility versus chance. Yeah, it's we, more real to you, more concrete. So if, yeah. you know, let's say the first few times you played pull tabs, you wouldn't have felt lucky. You might not have that as like a self-identifier for your luck because you would have stopped playing. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, I'm glad that you, you know, you're doing the responsible playing of understanding that you're bringing in more than you're paying out. Right. Cause mm -hmm. with something like that, where there is chance involved and, and, you know, cash, um, you know, you don't, you, you can't win if you don't play, but you also have to play responsibly or you're going to yeah, lose. Which in the long also, run. just so everyone knows, I don't play anymore because yeah. of the whole, um, yeah debt debtors anonymous thing so <laughs> um but you that brings up you're... oh go oh, ahead say, well just it brings up an interesting kind of thought because you you had said earlier um you know you both brought up privilege um and then others that sometimes it seems like other people are really lucky or maybe unlucky and so I was wondering like you know when do we talk about luck you know, if we're looking at outcomes, because for me, you were just about to ask me, do I feel lucky? Yeah, I was, I was, and I wasn't sure how to frame this topic because I do feel lucky, but I've also until recently felt that that luckiness was like fight club. You don't talk about it. <laughs> it, it can be taken away just as easily as it was granted. Um, that I used to have a friend that would love to bring up how lucky I am and so many things. And I could not shut that down fast enough. And then it's also like, you know, not necessarily trying to be humble about it, but like, you don't want to brag about your good luck. Right. And then there's also a lot of things where like you're lucky in different areas of life too. And so mm -hmm. overall, does that make you feel more or less lucky in life? Or how do you think about, you know, are you lucky in love? Are you lucky with finances? Are like you said, are you lucky in privilege? Like we tend to look at um, children born to wealthy families as lucky, but then we completely undercount the challenges that come up with being raised with a golden spoon in your mouth, whether they're aware of it or not. Right. Like, so there's all these sides of the coin, but you know, we tend to talk about luck. I feel like most with money, right. Like, yeah. yep. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. meeting the right people, you brought up opportunities earlier, you know, getting lucky. <laughs> like we have a few terms already and, and, and oh, that's so funny. Yeah. In our society and <laughs> our culture. Um, we wish people good luck at different things. Um, yeah. and one of my favorite like etiquette things I've ever realized or learned was through the Gilmore girls where somebody, um, wished Emily Gilmore good luck before her wedding. And she said, you wish the men good luck. You tell the women best wishes. And I was like, why does the men need luck? <laughs> like, I don't know why, but I have heard that before yeah. as well. But then it bring it reminds me too of sort of you saying, don't bring it up. Don't talk about it. When an actor is about to perform, you yeah. never say good luck. You say break a leg, which seems like the total wrong thing to say. <laughs> but to say good luck is to sort of hex it, curse it. Yeah. Yeah. Jinx it. Because typically luck has a supernatural element to it, right? I, that, oh, I think that's, that's that piece that. outside of the chance that's so unspoken. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of superstitions around it. There's the mythology, um, you know, so whether, whether it, you know, goes full on magic and it's like leprechauns phase um, um, or, or even greater than magic deities and gods and things like that um, bestowing something on you um, or just the superstitions of like, 
rabbit's feet, uh, athletes and fans that wear the same socks, the same clothing, do the same routines, or, you know, conversely, black cats get a really bad rap. There's rarely a 13th floor in a high rise building, walking under ladders, stepping on a crack, breaking a mirror, right? Like how many of us like broke a mirror in our youth and had to deal with that for seven years. (laughs) (laughs) Never broke any damn mirrors. I'm just going to say that. (laughs) Knock on wood. (laughs) Oh gosh. But uh, so when it comes to like I feel like, you know, are, am I lucky? Do you, are you lucky? Like, do you feel like you're lucky? Um, for me, I think I do feel lucky, but I don't just think it's like the big things people in my life like to point out. Mm -hmm. I feel lucky in little moments too. Um, and I feel like some of that feeling lucky is just kind of tied to similar kind of gratitude practices or just mindfulness moments. Like I love that in the middle of crafting, um, this while like texting you about the, when we're going to do the show and stuff like that, I walk out to the kitchen to get some water and I was like, Oh, two, two, two. And I felt really lucky that I caught that on the clock. It does absolutely (laughs) nothing for in my life, but it was something that I enjoy and I, I caught it. Right. And I yes. felt so lucky. Okay. So that's so interesting that you said that because as I was walking upstairs, I had to get, uh, I think I just refilled my iced tea or something. And I walked upstairs and I could see a reflection of a rainbow on the floor. And I felt the same way. I was like, Oh, I'm so lucky that I got to see that, that I didn't miss that sight. Oh. And Yeah. And it's so those little things doesn't, we think it does nothing for us, but doesn't it make you feel better? It lifts you up. And again, like, you know, did some supernatural force tell me I'm thirsty? I don't know. (laughs) Did it make sure I glance at the clock? Like I didn't have to look over there. That's not where the water nor the cups were, but I still felt lucky that I caught it in that moment. Right. Cause it made me happy. And I think so much of us associate luck with feelings of happiness or sadness. Um, Mm. and that, that also might be why it feels like a jinx to talk about it. Cause how many people are just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Right. Um, because people talk about bad luck all the time. They and do. And I also w- want to just talk a little bit about what you just mentioned. People always worrying about when's the other shoe yeah. going to drop, especially it feels like if something good has happened, they're, they're almost like, well, better not celebrate that. Cause you know, something bad is going to happen. And so for me, that almost feels like a self, uh, uh, what's that Fulfilling called? prophecy. Thank you. Yes. You're going to call it in. Yeah. And similar with talking about your bad luck all the time or framing the things in your life as bad luck. And as though Mm -hmm. you don't have control over it, it tends to call in more bad luck or you noticing more of what you don't want. And so it's just so funny to me that we don't talk about good luck out loud. And again, you probably don't want to brag, right? Like the two, two, two thing is a simple thing to talk about winning the law is weird, right? That is weird. But I feel like if we got more comfortable with talking about the fun little things that we view as luck, then maybe it wouldn't be so weird or would it still to be talking about the lottery? I don't know. I don't know. So I think I've alluded to this or said in the, so I've, I've won a significant amount of money in the lottery. It wasn't life-changing, but it changed my day-to-day life. Like it allowed me to make changes in my life in the moment, right? Like I mean, it didn't even really push me that far into another tax bracket with how much I kept. I was able to help people. I was able to pay stuff off and, and I was able to kind of change how I was, I was living paycheck to paycheck before that. And it eliminated bills. Um, it was a weird thing to use to talk about. So like in those, um, what do they call them? Icebreakers. You're supposed to say like, um, random fun fact about yourself. And like this one girl was like, my dog speaks five languages. And I was like, crap, I, I don't even measure up to your dog. Like I couldn't think of anything. So the whole time I'm like instant messaging or texting a friend and she's like, Tracy, you won the Powerball. And I was like, is that like humble bragging? And she's like, it was five years ago, right? Like she was like, why not talk about it? Like, and how many people have met someone that they've, that's won the lottery, right? And it's not yeah. like they can ask you for money. Like, especially if you say how much you, you won, nobody's going to be like, oh, give me a handout <laughs> that far away. But at the same time, it was something that felt like such a a singular moment, right? Like, although they do the drawing two to three times a week, only one person typically can win that. I mean, you can't have multiple people and then they split it, but usually it's just kind of one person, if any, right. So it kind of feels like a huge brag. Whereas when it happened, I mean, I learned the hard way I was telling everybody at first, because I was just like, 
can you believe it? Right. Like it wasn't so much like, look at what I got, but like, right. Holy crap. This does happen in real life. Yeah. Yeah. To people, you know, me, (laughs) (laughs) Well, everybody, everybody I did tell, um, was like, there's nobody more deserving. And I was like, you like, (laughs) what? Like, and I genuinely meant that. I was like, each and every one of us is worth at the very least the amount of money I just acquired. Like, um, but so it feels, it does, it feels like a bragging thing to do, even though when you take the chance thing into it, like when, when I won, they apologized, uh, after they validated my ticket, they took me in back because they have to process paperwork and you have to talk to a bunch of different people and prove you didn't like steal it or like print it yourself at a gas station. Right. Like there's this whole process. It took like two to three hours. And so as we're walking, she apologized because the winner's room was closed for, for construction and remodeling (laughs) the winner's room, the winner's room. And so they brought me into this big space where they usually do press conferences. And it just seemed a big room with a folding table in it. Right. Like it wasn't terrible. It was like, I I will wait outside. (laughs) (laughs) All I, I spent $8 on four tickets and one of them got me this money. I'm a winner, whether you see me in that room or not. (laughs) Right. And so I was like, you get complaints. And she goes, yeah. And she was was like, who? Like, like this is, this is back when Minnesota required like names and cities. And it was like, point to the list who hurt you. (laughs) I will talk to them. Like, what the heck? Like who, who wins money for doing very little and then complains and who doesn't realize that how unbelievably lucky they are in that moment. Like I was worried up until even after that check was in my bank account, like even going to the bank, I was like, Ooh, I don't like, when will this be available? And I was like, and they're like, it's, it's a lottery check. It's available now. <laughs> they're good for it. <laughs> it's like, Oh, but it was, I mean, like the teller was holding the check and giving, you know, like letting me know how much is now in my account. And I still thought it could be taken away. Right. Like, cause I didn't earn it. Cause it was the luck piece of it. Right. I was very well aware the entire time. I did not feel like I did anything to learn this or, but then the more I, I like the aftermath of that, I've had people in my life that when talking about certain things, especially around the little things that are like, Oh, I'm not lucky like Tracy. And I realized the difference between me and some of the people in my life. One, I buy lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Two, I would never luck block myself like that. <laughs> right, right. I can remember one time. Um, I won't tell everything <laughs> about it, but one of my children refused to do this thing that would have been a really good opportunity for them. And I told another child, <laughs> my daughter, and she's like, why is he blocking his and I think she used the word like abundance but yes. but it was like luck like this is a lucky thing why is he sabotaging it and blocking it I don't know so one of the <laughs> things I've realized and I do this in certain areas of my life where I don't feel I don't feel unlucky but I wouldn't say I am lucky where there is some areas of my life where I was like oh yeah I got loads of luck here right like I'm I'm well yeah. aware but yeah. when I when I started kind of looking at the people in my life and who does have luck in similar areas to me, who has luck where I don't, um, negative self-talk plays such a huge role um, that people who don't think they're lucky don't see opportunity and don't take chances. I mean, that's, I feel like that's sort of in here, like the willingness to experience, but also people we've said this so many times, your words that come out of your mouth, and form in your brain the feelings you have around those words and thoughts those words are spells those words are magic and so if you're just going to let them fall on the ground because you don't think you're good enough for this or you don't have that kind of luck you're just letting them fall on the ground and trip you up that's what's happening um so for me, I've always known I was going to win the lottery at least three times in life. Okay. This is confirmed. This is what I, I seriously, <laughs> I never said this. it out loud until it happened. But as a child, my, on the way to my grandmother's house, she lived within five miles of the Minnesota state lottery office in Roseville. And so anytime I went to visit her or anytime I went to our Rosedale mall, and it's right on the freeway, anybody who drives on 35 by 280 over there, if you're in Minnesota, you know, 
it's a it's not a huge it's a very understated office building it does not look grandiose like i would think like a trump tower or like something made of gold is like befitting a lottery it's made of gold. but it's just this this office that's needed a a, a, a refresh since i was a child <laughs> thinking these thoughts and it just has this little oval sign with a loon on it that says minnesota state lottery yeah and I always wanted to know what it was like in there. I always wanted to know what it was like to go into the lottery office and to win the lottery. I don't even know if I really knew what the lottery was at the time. So I feel like some of your luck had to do with your burning desire, your curiosity. But I also, but like, I think some people in my life, even then would have been like, oh, I'm not lucky enough to win the lottery or, oh, don't play the lottery. We don't have luck in our family or we're not lucky with money or whatever. But I fully believe someday I'm going to see inside that as a winner. Right. And so after my experience, that's changed to, I'm going to see, I'm going to see that remodeled winner's room someday. There you go. I'm going to see that room. I'm going <laughs> to, when they ask the question, cause when they asked me, have you ever won the lottery before I laughed? <laughs> Like I scoffed, like what a silly question. And they just completely barefaced. Three different people went through the same kind of round of questions in a different way with me. Uh, like a kind of, like, kind of like a job interview, just kind of like a succession of people. Yeah, coming out. Yeah. And they each asked it and they each very plain faced explained to me what I said earlier. And it was just like, we see many multiple winners. Uh, and, and I can attest to how I play the lottery now versus before, <laughs> but that mindset holds true. I don't know if it's because of the fact they told me or what, but I have never not believed that I wouldn't win the lottery. That's a lot of negatives there. So <laughs> no, but I like it. So you, yeah, I'm not going to say, I always, I'm not going to say I always believed I am definitely winning this lottery when I bought this ticket, but it's always seemed like a possibility. It's never not seemed like a possibility where there are people in my life who they even buy tickets while verbalizing. This is, I'm never going to win, which to keep your oh, dollar. I what? Well, yeah. Yeah. But okay, I love the fact that you're talking about the possibility, like you knew it was a possibility. And I think even if it's hard for people to say this, I will do this, or this will become a reality, or I will be lucky in this, to at least open themselves up to the possibility of something. I love that. And I feel so like that's a nice little stepping stone. Chip Denman says luck is probability taken personally. And I like that because there's always going to be a certain level of chance, right? Like even mm -hmm. a basketball player, you can be the best in the world and still have a bad day. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, if you, if you take your skills and your hard work and your preparation and then tie it with like your ambition and your wants and your goals and your dreams, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a certain level of kind of making things happen. So if you pray, I, I hate to make the lottery. And if, if uh, there are people with serious gambling addictions and stuff like that, so I'm not trying to make light of anything like that, but like there are people who play the, uh, who pray to win the lottery and never buy a ticket. <laughs> um, right. Right. And so there's a certain element, you know, if you, if so you, you dream have, of, you actually have a job in yes. this whole luck. Yes. Experience. It's you, you have to kind of decide what you want. So if you want to be lucky in love, you can't just stay in your living room all day. <laughs> that, that's a tall order for even the most magical of universes, right? Like, um, because quite honestly, uh, even if I was like, Hey God, put the perfect guy for me on my couch right now. If that were to happen, could you imagine the movie of that? Like I <laughs> the leading lady would be so freaked out. You would lock yourself in your bathroom so fast. You would, you know, iron pan to the face, that man so quickly, you would not be like, exactly. God answered my prayers. Right. Yeah. But like, yeah. let's say you're like, Oh, I really like running instead of running by myself. I'm going to join a run club. And then all of a sudden this handsome guy that checks off all your boxes is there. You're going to feel lucky in love. Like, Oh my gosh, this is so serendipitous when like you made several choices that got you to that point. <laughs> I just, so there's, there's a, there's, there's a level of preparation. I feel like that comes to luck that people don't talk about. So, you know, I, I think I shared it a couple episodes ago, but, um, Lizzo has, you know, kind of famously said, you know, it takes 10 years to become an overnight sensation. Yeah. Um, and that there's, 
you can work really, really hard and not get your big break. Right. So I understand that there is a component of je ne sais quoi to life, right? There's just that certain piece, the right moment, the right time. But if you had not done the work ahead of time, you're not ready for it. Um, and so I want to tie all of this back, uh, to that whole kind of risk assessment that we've been talking about, you know, this whole business. Oh of yeah. Yeah. You have to look at risk and reward threat and opportunity. So yeah. I want to encourage people do an assessment of where you don't feel lucky, where you feel like either you have bad luck or no luck, where you feel like you have luck and then kind of do those why exercises we talk about and then self eval, like, do I say things out loud? Do I prevent myself from taking opportunities or risks because I tell myself I'm unlucky in this? And if I am truly unlucky, let's look at why, like, fine. If you do the five whys and you do a gap, you do all these things we're talking about and you still, there's no objective answer then. Okay. Yeah. The, you know, the universe doesn't want that for you. (laughs) (laughs) No, I love that idea of actually doing some homework around it and digging into it. And I think people will be surprised if they actually do it, especially with the five whys once you've done sort of that analysis of it, where the gaps are, and then the five whys, it's pretty amazing what can come of that. And it sort of makes you want to continue to do it and to dig even deeper. And the, the universe matches your vibration, right? What, what you put out, you tend to get in, right? So if you are in a pity me state, right? If you're, if you're truly struggling, ask for help, right? I'm not saying you have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but let's say you're, you are down on your luck and hitting a wall and just life is really tough in a lot of places. You're not going to be lucky when you're desperate, right? Mm -hmm. I, life wasn't hard or easy when I won the lottery, right? Like a, you know, student, like life was happening, but I was employed. I wasn't completely down on, on my luck. It wasn't my last dollar. Um, but when I reflect back on that time, so there's a lot of stuff with luck that's kind of retrospective, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I've purchased lottery tickets before. I don't have a set numbers that I play, right? Like I just kind of auto picked, um, it was a huge lottery. So a lot of people were playing. Right. But when I look at the energy I was giving out at the time, I was doing a lot of stuff that was in service to others. And then I think I shared this with you. I, I was kind of a little avoidant with my budget, maybe a little too accepting with the paycheck to paycheckness I was in and just kind of everything I was doing was going to continue that lifestyle. Right. Like I wasn't getting a second job. I wasn't changing my spending habits but yet I was still stressing about money, right? Things were getting paid and on time, but like, it was just the grind. And I sat down the, the night I ended up, the drawing was, I forgot I had bought the ticket, right? Like I had made a really big deal that I had, my dad and I, you know, we're talking about what we would do. I was driving him to a health appointment and I was like, okay, I'm going to get a ticket. And then we're going to, we're going to do these big dreams. And so at lunch that day at work, I was like, no, I have to take a lunch today. I said, I was going to buy a ticket. Like I have to go to lunch because I have to get cash and I have to do this. Right but then I forgot about it. I didn't like, I didn't put it on an altar. I didn't say prayers about it. I didn't start making lists, you know, writing down everything my dad and I said, instead what I did that night, completely unaware, like not, not tied to the lottery at all. I opened my bullet journal and I made it, I drew out a debt snowball thing on one side so that I had to visually see the mess I'd got myself into. And then on the other side, I started listing out and prioritizing all the goals that I wanted to achieve that I was not going to get to achieve if I continued this. And so instead of running away from how I felt energetic, like I was putting up a lot of energetic blocks, I feel like, and again, this is all retrospective. Um, But like by doing that, doing the work, coming up with the plan, I feel like it opened me up to a lot of possibilities because then also powerful that you actually looked at what it was that you had been doing or had been avoiding. Cause you, like you said, you were avoiding it and that you opened yourself up to it, to look at it, to make the plan, to see what it is you wouldn't get if you didn't do this. And I agree with you. I think it did open up something for you. Where I feel lucky wasn't necessarily the winning ticket. 
Where I feel luckiest was my knowledge of lottery winners up until that point was the majority of them become broker than they were before they won. Right. Um, and I don't know why I've been beating around this. I won $50,000, which after taxes is just a little over 30. Um, and then I gave half to my dad and I gave some money to my sisters and my grandma because um, I believe in paying it forward. And my dad and I, I don't know if I would have stressed about buying a ticket had we not been dreaming big. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted to honor that. And he was going through some things. But where I felt most lucky was since I had that plan, once that money was in my bank account, in the parking lot of the bank account, I paid all those bills. <laughs> I knew exactly how much debt I had. And I, as much as I wanted all this new stuff and to do stuff, I knew what I, what would change my day-to-day -day life where, where it would make changes in my life. Mm -hmm. And so while a lot of people are like, don't make decisions and don't do this or that, I knew my spending habits. And I knew where I was. So I was able to pay off those things, cut off the credit cards. And then I was able to do fun stuff after that. Right. And, and, but to keep it in check, whereas so before, you were strategic with your luck, I, I think so. <laughs> but then not being stressed about finances gave me the mental power to apply for new jobs, to be like, you are really unhappy at this terrible yeah. place. Yeah. And I got the job at the library that changed my life. Yeah. It you, it gave me all sorts of friends. It gave me my current career. It I got a house. <laughs> yeah. Like it was like this domino effect and everybody else, you know, when they talk about my luck, they think about the Powerball. And when I think about my luck, I think about all the opportunities I was able to see and seize because I had changed my mindset on things. And because I had prepared, like if I do get money and I have always my, I, I gave each of my sisters $500. And like the rule was it, like, we're all struggling financially. It has to be fun. I, I don't care if your house is on fire, like go get a tattoo like this. I, like we're just having fun in our lives, right? Like this we each get $500 sister cash. And that, that was really fun to do. But, and they all said like, wow, if I'm in the lottery, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have given you anything. <laughs> like hope that when you win your second and third time, hope that doesn't change your mind. But the, I was told by four different ways, I wouldn't have thought of you. <laughs> I was so surprised because I've always known again, when I win these different amounts of the lottery, this is how much I would give to different people. Yeah. yeah. That's all. It, I've always had a plan of how my lottery winnings would go. And so I wonder if that's a part of it too. Like you said, you strategized your luck. So one area where I wouldn't say I'm not unlucky, thankfully, but I wouldn't say I'm lucky is love. And so writing out this whole thing was like, I have to do like this assessment that I just told everybody about. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, but yeah, so I, I've worked really hard to be this lucky is what I want to say to a lot of people in my family. <laughs> and so listen to all of our other episodes, positive thinking, affirmations, being wary, uh, aware of your comparison to other people. Why do you think they're lucky and you're not right? Like, mm -hmm. and you brought up bravery and courage. I think that's necessary. Open-minded gratitude, pay attention to your intuition and gut. Um, but also, I just want to kind of end with kind of rush here. Sorry, guys. Um, where can you be someone's good luck that day? Where can you help with someone else's luck? Like in addition to wishing someone good luck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or even where can you be excited? Because even though like I buy the Minnesota raffle tickets and all this stuff and I, you know, when the Powerball's big again, I, you know, do what I did before. But when I look and I don't see that I, I won, but I saw someone else in Minnesota did, I'm almost as excited as the day I checked my ticket. Cause I, I know what that. that feels like. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Excited when other people are lucky where you want to be, yeah. be excited. Yes. Gosh, I love that. And hey, you know what? If this episode spoke to you or your soul, share it with a friend. If you have time, give us some love on your preferred platform with a rate, review, and subscribe. You can also reach out to us via Instagram and YouTube under The Brightly Podcast or via email at brightlypodcast at gmail.com. And with that, we hope you have a bright and beautiful and very lucky day. <laughs>